ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு அட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ இட்ஸ் பின் லாங் டைம் வி ஹேவென்ட் posted a video on neo load after the uh, I, i think recently i have posted a video on uh, how to convert your postman script to neo load so that was uh, my latest video on neo load after a long time so in case if you haven't watched it please go check my uh, playlist and you can find the video so now we will discuss another important topic because recently i have got many questions where our subscribers are asking me that they are recording a transaction and they are finding some errors or they are expecting a 200 response code but they are getting a 3 or 4 response code which is basically an error so we are so in this video i will tell you how to fix those errors or how to at least find whether they are valid or in case if they are valid how to fix it so before we move on to the video this is me yavasan shamrugam i welcome you all to our little sly youtube channel please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you are new to our channel and if you haven't subscribed it yet and like and share the video with your friends who are looking for some help on neo load so now let's move on to the video so this is an example video which i have created while i was using uh, for exporting uh, the postman script to jmeter script uh, sorry to the neolord script so let me use this example uh, script for for the demonstration purpose so here i have a get request so for example when you are recording a request you might record both the get and the post request so some of the places which you have to check to fix the issues or first is first thing is the request type so go to the request type and check whether you have the request type as user manual definition and run it and in case if you find errors like the 304 error just change the request type and try to make some changes say for example you can just change the referrer like you can change the request type to follow the redirect of the previous request and you can change the referrer but this has to be done based on the request and then you can even try this follow a link from the previous request or you can even try the submit a form from the previous request in case if it is a form just try only if, if it is a form otherwise because most of the time when we record they might get recorded in the different formats like the follow the redirect of the previous request or follow a link from the previous request or submit a form from the re- previous request so in those in those scenarios i would request you to just change to manual definition and also check whether it's a, it's in the right method type whether it's a get method or the post method and then just check whether you have the right server that's been added to the script in case if it is wrong you can just edit the server and you can change the servers accordingly and also check the path as well so once you have checked all these and you have checked all the request parameters if you still don't find anything that's that is showing you an error then we have the advanced tab here just go to the advanced tab and under the request header you can see the accept encoding the accept accept encoding the connection we host and in this example i have a postman token so most of the times the dynamic values you cannot see them in the request directly in the design tab here so you can't see these values here so in those scenarios you can go to the request header and find these values here and apart from this there is one more thing which i would recommend you to do because there is a header type which we all know which is the content type which normally has the text or json or like different uh, con- header uh, content headers are there or the header types are there so in case if you find that in your recorded version 
and if it is not here in the script you can just add them and see how does it work and apart from this so while you are validating this script so let me do a quick validation and I will show you what else I will see so here this example I have got uh, executed this get request so some of the ways to troubleshoot the troubleshoot this is in case if you are getting an error for this request go to the request click the compare button and see whether you have the exact thing here between the validation request and your recorded request most of the times you'll get this dot com colon 443 just ignore that that's not a big deal and accept encoding and then the postman type and everything and there is one more thing which I want to say because if, if this if this is like throwing errors just go to the advanced and there is this option of handle cache you can just try with different options and then there is one more thing which is let me just open it yes so when you go to the browser the recorded one you can see here the parameters which shows http2 and handle cookies and you can also see the accept encoding so you can uncheck these options and also you can make changes to the http say for example if you see here i have got http1 parallel connections but at the same time when you see here the get request which is part of the validation request is http 2.0 but the record request is http 1.1 so these are some of the ways which you can try doing in your scripting while you do your validation so as i have told you go to the advanced click the browser recorded one and uncheck these encoding types or even you can select all of these or you can uncheck this http2 and try all these options to see how does it work and basically this 304 error is a response code that stands for not modified so it's used to indicate to the client that is to the web browser that the requested resources has not been modified since the last time it was requested and therefore there is no need to retransmit the resources representation so when the web browser requests a resource from a server it typically includes an if modified since header in the request so that's how the web browser works and this specifies the timestamp when it last received the resource so the server then compares this timestamp with the resources current modification timestamp and if the timestamp has not been modified since the specified timestamp the server responds with a 304 not modified status code along with an empty body indicating to the client that it can use its cached version of the resource so the use of 304 response helps to reduce unnecessary network traffic and improve the performance by allowing the clients to cache resources and to avoid redundant data transfer okay so this is so while you get a response code while you get an error please do some investigation and find why are we getting this error or what exactly is this error talking about so in this scenario as i have told you uh, you can uncheck these options uh, for example like you can even uh, since in this 304 you if you run your test with cache it will it looks like it will work so you can try with the returning user or you can try with as recorded and you can even try with the new user as well to make sure that whether it works or not so in new load if you are encountering a 304 response code and you need to address it there are several approaches you can take depending on your testing scenario and objectives so the first part is you can verify the cache control headers so you have to ensure that the cache control headers in your requests are appropriately configured so new load allows you to customize http header in your requests so you may need to adjust the cache control directives to control the caching behavior by setting a specific cache expiration time or by disabling the 
caching altogether so by doing this so you can do this here in the advance the request headers so you can do all these cache control changes here by adding a column here so you can add a column and you can add the cache control features and then the cache busting so this fixes which i'm telling you is specifically for the 304 error so cache busting so if you want to force the server to return a new version of the resource instead of relying on the cached version you can implement cache bursting techniques and this typically involves appending a query parameter to the url of the resource being requested which ensures that each request appears unique to the server and neoload supports dynamic parameters and variables which we all know which allows you to generate unique urls for each request and when it comes to disabling the cache so in some cases you may want to disable the caching entirely for specific request or scenario so you can achieve this by modifying the cache control headers so again everything comes to the header so you can make this change by using the cache control header so for example like you can do for example i'm just giving an example like you can do like the cache control where you can add a, a header like yes so you can add a request header which says cache control as no cache and also you can add another cache control as no sorry no store so these values as I told you, these values will help you to disable the cache. So let me just do a quick testing. And before that, let me just check these values as well. Yep, they are good. So let me just try to run this and see whether it works fine. And after that, so the dynamic parameterization. So you have to ensure that your test script includes any dynamic parameterizations to handle changes in resource versions or timestamps and new load allows you to extract data from the server responses and reuse it in subsequent request which ensures that each request is unique and not served from the cache and finally the response validation so you have to do a validation so you can use this validation to validate the response content you can add a assertion so neural provides this assertion capabilities to verify the response content status codes headers and other attributes so by doing all these you can find why does the virtual user not behave as expected and also you can fix those faulty requests so i believe this video on neural is very useful to you so in case if you have any questions please do comment in the comment section or you can reach me on my linkedin or you can email me your question so i would rather prefer you can just do a comment so i can just quickly jump in and try to help you so with that we come to an end until i meet you in another really really interesting and informative video it's bye bye from ascension program and little slaw